look forward. Will you accept the election results of 2024 no matter what happens, Senator? No matter what happens? No, if it's an unfair election, I think it's going to no be contested by wins. either side. Senator, no matter well, who why don't wins. You, uh, I think you're asking the wrong person. The Democrats are the ones that have opposed every Republican victory since 2000. Every single one. Does all this sound at all f- uh, familiar to you? Hello and welcome back once again. I promise you today's video is going to be very satisfying and extra spicy. It comes from yesterday's Face the Nation with DEI Democrat Party operative pretending to be a real reporter who attempts to rewrite history and lie her face off, making the easily refutable claim that it's totally different when Democrats deny election results. Enough for me. Let's check out the clip and then I'll give you my thoughts. Look forward. Will you accept the election results of 2024 no matter what happens, Senator? No matter what happens, no. If it's an unfair election, I think it's going to no be contested by wins. either side. Senator, no matter well, who why don't wins. You, uh, I think you're asking the wrong person. The Democrats are the ones that have opposed every Republican victory since 2000. Every single one. Gee, where have we heard that argument before? Basically, everyone was mostly accepting election results up until the year 2000. As long as I've been an adult, starting with the 2000 election, Democrats have claimed every election that they lost was stolen. If anything is going on here, it's an escalation with Republicans getting in on the game that Democrats have been playing for decades. If you watch this channel, you know have a history going back to at least the year 2000 of election denial and violence in response. Oh, you're right. Republican victory since 2000. Every single one. It's Hillary Clinton. No Democrat has refused to concede. Hillary Clinton conceded. Senator, will you accept the election? Hillary Clinton said the election was stolen from her and that Trump was illegitimate. Kamala Harris agreed. We have Democrats now. You keep using the word. I don't know think it means what you think it means. Senator, she can see the election. You can run the best campaign. You can even become the nominee. And you can have the election stolen from you. It was illegitimate. But she had- Trump knows he's an illegitimate president who got illegitimate foreign power. Why do you think the president is going to such great lengths to essentially prove that he beat you? Because he knows he didn't. He knows he's an illegitimate president. Legitimate. There was a widespread understanding that this election was not on the level. Senator, she can see the election. Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! She said that Joe, she said that Joe, she said that, no, she said that Trump was illegitimate. She said that the election had been stolen. Kamala Harris agreed. By the way, there are Democrats serving in Congress today who in 2004 voted not to certify the Ohio vo- uh, electors because they said those machines Senator. have been tampered with. And you have Democrats now saying they won't certify 2024 because Trump Sen- is an insurrectionist Senator. and ineligible to hold office. So you need to ask them. I think you've had a, Senator. have you ever asked the Democrat Senator, this you, question Senator, on your you, show? No freaking way. Senator, I bet you you've never asked a Democrat that question. Senator, you voted to certify the 2020 election. And here is what you said on that day that you voted to certify the 2020 election. Yeah. Democracy is held together by people's confidence in the election and their willingness to abide by its results. So by your own definition, are Donald Trump's claims undermining Americans' confidence in democracy, given that he has not conceded the last election. And he just said in recent days twice that he won Minnesota, Senator. I think what undermines people's confidence in the election is when you have places like Wisconsin with over 500 illegal drop box locations, when you have places like Georgia where liberal groups are paying people $10 per vote. No, but listen, what undermines elections is when when NBC News and every major news outlet in America in 2020 censored the Biden laptop story, which turned out to be true, not Russian misinformation, unprecedented. Only you, you couldn't even talk about it on social media. They would deplatform you. People look at all this. They look at what happened in Arizona. Two hundred thousand ballots Senator, that had the signatures didn't match. Senator, People will lose confidence on. and it Senator, opens the door have, to this. I have to it jump does. in here. Senator, you voted to certify the election. And because at that stage course, in the process, would, you have no Senator, options. Senator, you voted to certify the election. Nothing has been censored on this program <laughs> Joe they're calling you a corrupt politician nobody president the Trump I want to stay hell. on the issue Excuse of me. race we're Take talking the about the issue of from hell president Trump nobody. We're, we're talking about race right now and I do want to stay on the issue of race nothing has been censored on this program. Hillary Clinton. Did you guys did cover the laptop for Joe Absolutely Biden in 2020? We Biden? Absolutely. We covered the laptop. It was and Hillary you Clinton couldn't even talk concede. about it in but bottom social line, media. Chris Krebs, the top you election official, You couldn't talk about it in social media. It'd be deplatformed. Was- 
You Chris, couldn't even talk about it because they, they you were called. They, they said it was Russian disinformation. Senator, Senator and Rubio, and voters we, that in many cases didn't even hear, hear about it because did, it was blacked out by the media. We did cover the election, and just to note that Chris Krebs, who was a top Trump election, election official, yeah. called it the safest and uh, most secure election in recent history. Senator but Rubio, that, we are out safe of time. Or, or, of but, course we are, but, but, but I'm telling you that if it's unfair, we are going to do the same thing Democrats do. We're going to use lawyers to go to court and point out the fact that states are not following their own election okay, laws. But the Democrats, Hopefully we'll have a fair election all of those and it'll cases, be Senator, Senator, all those cases were brought uh, to court cases and lost, and there was no proof that there was any widespread fraud, as you know. But I appreciate... I never used the word widespread fraud. I, I very... I, I'm uh, sorry. Sit, all right. I'm not cringing. I'm just... Senator Rubio, thank you very much. I appreciate your time this morning. Gee, look at the time. Well, gotta go. If you're new to this channel or maybe haven't watched a video in a while, the information I'm about to drop is critical to seeing through the Democrat Party state media's lies. Like Rubio stated, Democrats have denied every election that they've lost since the year 2000. They literally started the trend of election denial and using violence in response during the transfer of power. Now, unfortunately, I can't show you the videos of this on YouTube because they'll demonetize me. But if you head over to my X channel, you can see them there. I'll even put some links in the description and pinned comment. Not only did Democrats call the 2000, the 2004, and 2016's election stolen, they also rioted during both Bush's and Donald Trump's inauguration, while also making very real efforts to overturn the election results, then paint both presidencies as illegitimate. So much though that you can see both in the cases of Bush and Trump that a majority of Democrats saw both the election and president as illegitimate. As you see here, only 15% of Democrats thought Bush won, quote, fair and square with one third saying that he stole it outright. In 2017, polls showed between 57 and 68% of Democrats did not accept Trump as legitimate. Why would they? With the Democrat Party's entire institutional support base, especially in the media, telling them every day that the election had been stolen by Russia. Not to mention Hillary Clinton making her rounds in the media, saying that Trump was illegitimate. Senator, she can see the election. In 2000, the Black Caucus led the effort to decertify Florida and over turn the election results. 2004, they tried again. They tried again in 2016. And they even ran with a fake elector scheme. I think there are people who are pushing very hard who think that um, because of some of the constitutional perils of the emoluments clause, uh, because of the popular vote margin, because of um, a fundamental, they think, threat to liberal democracy that that the that electors should be persuaded and pressured on monday to to part with what their pledge is and vote and vote against donald trump yes they absolutely you should do so? that absolutely I, I believe right now that there are electors they only need 38 of them who have a conscience or who are worried about a man who won't attend the daily security briefings who uh who we now know russia was trying to help get elected michael moore and the author of the washington post article went as far as to pledge money and legal services to help these electors with their legal troubles afterwards oh that was different as i mentioned earlier we watched all of our institutions unite to join hillary clinton in the russian collusion scheme which they knew was a lie and an obvious attempt to paint both trump and the election as illegitimate rubio pointed out hillary clinton's 2016 denials but a lot of people don't know she's been a big election denier going back to the 2000 and 2004 elections which she heavily implied were both stolen bush versus gore a court took away a presidency as we look at our election system i think it's fair to say that there are many legitimate questions about its accuracy about its integrity but this is completely different and not just hillary but democrats in general who spent months after the 2016 election holding hearings on voting machines being rigged and hacked i continue to think that our voting machines are too vulnerable for researchers have repeatedly de demonstrated that ballot recording machines and other voting systems are susceptible to tampering even hackers with limited prior knowledge tools and resources are able to breach voting machines in a matter of minutes in 2018 electronic voting machines in georgia and texas delivered deleted votes for certain candidates or switch votes from one candidate to another. I actually held a demonstration for my colleagues here at the Capitol um, where we brought in um, folks who, before our eyes, hacked election machines. 
um, those that are not those that are being used in many states. Aging systems also frequently rely on unsupported software like Windows XP in 2000, which may not receive regular security patches and are thus more vulnerable to the latest methods of cyber attack. In a close presidential election, they just need to hack one swing state, or maybe one or two, or maybe just a few counties in one swing state. As Rubio pointed out, you'll never, ever see these media hacks as Democrats about their past election denial, despite the entire trend being started and driven by Democrats. That is their entire MO after all. Set a standard for political expediency, then don't hold themselves to that standard for political expediency. And now they can just get away with anything by telling themselves that they're saving democracy somehow. Now you see that evil will always triumph because good is dumb. That's why there's always going to be somebody like Kristen Welker in the media to speak on behalf of the Democrat Party and explain to you not to believe your lying eyes and ears and just accept that it's different when they do it. What do you all think? Let me know in the comments, then hit that like and subscribe. I post videos regularly, so keep checking back for more.